June of 2018. Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The first item on our agenda is the approval of minutes. Um, assuming that they've been read, uh, do I have a motion for approval? I move to approve. We have a motion to, to approve. May I have a second? Second. We have a motion to second. Uh, any ad additions, deletions, or corrections? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Thank you. Um, public input, is there anyone in the audience who would like to be heard? Seeing none, I will move to streetcar system report. Mr. Allen. Good afternoon. Um, for May missed trips, we had three and a quarter missed trips. Uh, this was caused by a person needing medical attention at one of the stations. They weren't on the system, but they needed attention. And one of our, and our motormen stayed with them till help arrived. And also we missed one trip in there because of flooding at the CSX interlocking. Uh, on time performance for May was 99.91%. And accidents and incidents, once again in May, we didn't have any. We are currently at 176 days without an accident. That's good it news. Is not yeah, worth great. So after 18 years, people finally get used to. Wow. Punch out loud, right? Thank you very much. Uh -huh. And uh, <laughs> extra service, we provided 99 hours for the APTA convention for early service. 32.28 uh, hours for the Lightning Games, uh, 12 hours for Charter, and <coughs> five, almost five and a half hours for uh, concerts. We had 23 wheelchair boardings, and all other maintenance is up to date. And also I wanted to add that I had a good meeting with the city this morning, and it looks like we're gonna have street sweeping of the right-of-way put onto their schedule. So roughly every 40 days or so you'll see the right away starting to be cleaned. Good. So good news. Does any anyone have any questions? Any questions? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, let's move to legal and legislative report. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I have nothing to report. That's good news. Yeah. Glad you're here though. Nice to see you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, chair's sure. report. I really don't have a report. I really like to turn this over. I may have something to say after um, Mr. Seward gives his report though, which is um, one that I think we're all interested in hearing. Good afternoon. Jeff Seward, Interim Chief Executive Officer of HART. I'm just coming up here because it's easier than me turning my head <laughs> back and forth, back and forth, looking at everyone. Um, uh, so everyone has, has hopefully seen the press um, and, and uh, on the, the FDOT grant uh, for streetcar service. And what I wanted to do today was just uh, discuss a little bit about uh, the genesis of that grant. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, what what it doesn't mean? Uh, what it uh, how it will affect the development of uh, the FY19 budget that we will be bringing to you at the uh, July THS meeting. So, around the December time frame, um, when I uh, assumed the interim role, uh, I had a meeting with FDOT District Seven, and FDOT District Seven has said that there was an interest at the, the state level of providing some type of uh, funding uh, specifically to the city of Tampa um, jurisdiction uh, for transportation, uh, specifically for commuter service. And what ideas uh, did I have to uh, utilize those said funds? And I had asked, is a streetcar a viable option for those funds? And it was vetted, and it absolutely came back as, that would be a great idea, so here's what we would like you to do. We would like you to develop some scenarios where the streetcar would go fareless for up to three years. At the same time, we'd like you to be fareless. We want you to add additional service to make it a, a, a commuter option uh, for those in the downtown urban core, as well as uh, Ybor City. So we provided some options, and over those months, 
uh, from December, we had uh, various meetings, uh, scenarios got bounced back and forth. I know service planning is probably sick and tired of, of streetcar service uh, planning scenarios. Um, but we were going back and forth with, uh, with FDOT. During that process, I had hinted uh, to President English that um, there was something afoot as far as a potential state funding, but I could not articulate what that was um, at that time. Over the last three months, uh, discussions heated up, and um, I honestly believe that we would get a year's worth of uh, free fares, probably right around an $800,000 infusion of, of grant money. So it was to my surprise and delight that I saw that it was the entire full three years that we had initially talked about back in December uh, to the tune of $2.7 million. Now, although FDOT District 7, and, and, and I thank Secretary Gwynn again today uh, for these funds, uh, they were pivotal in, in driving um, this for the decision making uh, that occurred at central office. However, I will let you know that the final decision to approve this funding was not at the FDOT level, it was at the governor's office. So I did notice a, 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 uh, a comment in one of the, the press articles by uh, Governor Scott, and the final authority for those funds did indeed come from his office. So I wanted to let you know that um, there was some, some love for Tampa, uh, particularly for our, our, our now commuter rail service that we're going to be uh, initiating here uh, in the next few months. So, so what does that mean? Um, aside from us already telling patrons that they still have to pay to get on the streetcar, there are some that feel that it's already free, um, we will be developing a plan that we will be bringing back to, to you uh, in July of what that service model will look like. Uh, tentatively, we're looking at starting commuter service at 7 a.m. Um, and then running in 15 minute frequencies uh, throughout the day. We will, the plan we bring back to you will have some staggering of that depending on the hour and, and, the, and the weekday that we're talking about or the day of the week that we're talking about. So we'll have several options for you. What it does not mean it does not mean that we no longer need to seek funding for the streetcar. We still require the, the normal funding that we receive every year. This is obviously in addition to that funding. Also, if you net out the amount of fares that we typically collect in a given year and then reinvest that back into the streetcar, that's money that is no longer there to, to reinvest. So we're looking at around 1.2 million, 1.1 to 1.2 million dollars of additional new service going in, uh, beginning in October. What that what that will require one is is the state grant. Two, it will really require the uh, in towner money that originally was going to the in towner from the city of Tampa, and now that this has been announced, you can see some of the dynamics and some of the logic behind moving forward with the in-towner, knowing that we were gonna have to couple these funds together. Now this grant does not require a match. However, we are going to need to still utilize those funds to be able to provide that service. We will also need to still get, and we need to discuss with um, going to the YCDC meeting tomorrow, that those funds, that additional $150,000 a year they're providing for Saturday service, that still needs to be part of the budget too, or we're gonna to have to find somewhere to, to plug that hole. On the heart side of the house, we have been actively looking at ways to um, use our federal uh, 5307 formula funding to also plug um, gaps in that funding. And I am confident that we will be able to provide that additional uh, budget, the largest streetcar budget in, in many, many years, going in um, to October. So how do we gain access to these funds? Uh, pursuant to any other type of, of FDOT grant, we have to, we being HART, have to uh, join in a, a joint participation agreement or JPA with the Florida Department of Transportation for the use of those funds. We don't anticipate, after talking with FDOT today, I do not anticipate uh, being able to develop that and getting it to the full HART board until August or September. So again, we are looking at October implementation of the new service model. Uh, and again, that, that's good timing because it is the beginning of, of the fiscal year. 
Uh, we had a discussion earlier, uh, and we'll have it, I guess, again in a few minutes on, on the Streetcar Fest, of really developing a program in October to really restart and reinitiate the streetcar. And uh, we're looking at ways to rebrand. We're looking at, at uh, innovative marketing, uh, taking into account many of the comments that, that you as board members have, have provided to us, and, and really making this a, a, a monumentous occasion for the streetcar. Um, something that, that we've been talking about for some time, um, making it exciting, uh, making it a true commuter option for those that live and work and play in the downtown urban core. Um, there are those now that over the next few years can make decisions on, on to utilize the streetcar uh, for their commuting, knowing that it's gonna remain in the morning and remain at night and remain during the rush hour. A couple of things that have to occur prior to that, however, um, not negative, just things that need to occur. We will be removing all of, eventually. As you know, we installed uh, our Flamingo uh, revenue collection equipment on the streetcars. We are going to keep them on the cars through our integration testing of the entire system, but then we will be removing all of the revenue collection material off of the cars. And we're also looking at different ways to count passengers as they get on board and possibly eliminating and removing all of the fare infrastructure on board the cars as well. So that is um, something that we will be working on. And again, we are going to work quickly um, and have a comprehensive plan for you to review and consider at our July uh, THS board meeting. And the timing of this, this was the other reason why typically we would bring back a draft budget in, in the May June timeframe, knowing that this was floating, it, it just didn't make sense to bring a budget that was gonna get completely blown up in the next month. <laughs> so we will be bringing a, a, a draft budget to you. Um, we are on the hook to provide the city of Tampa a draft budget by July 3rd. We will do that. So the budget that you see on July, whatever, 17th, 18th, um, will be already had, had it, will have already been submitted to the city of Tampa. So we'll be having conversations with them of exactly what, what the expectation is going to be for uh, the budget. But uh, I know there has been some talk that this, obviously this, this money will lower the amount of, of revenues, both in, uh, local and grant dollars that go into the streetcar. It will not. That has to stay the same as it has been. This is on top of what we already have. So that's the story. Um, we're very pleased. Um, we have um, thanked FDOT. Uh, I know we, we talked about getting a letter from the president to, to FDOT thanking them for this um, uh, grant funding. And at the July meeting, I will also be inviting uh, the District 7 Secretary, Secretary David Gwynn, to attend this meeting um, or uh, someone in his um, stead to uh, hear what the plan is. Um, and um, we can thank them in person. Or do you have any questions? Questions? Well, fabulous news. Uh, Dave, you know, what happens at the end of the three-year period? <laughs> yeah, I am hoping that we have an active extension project underway and that we will be able to work with FDOT, showing them the ridership that we have achieved over those three years and a continuation of that money. That That's my goal, is to show so one of the one of the uh, one of the key advantages of, of, of this, aside from a, a, another commuting option, is we are going to be able to show increased ridership numbers as we move forward with federal grant funding for the extension. At least theoretically, that's what we want to be able to do. But we also want to show FDOT that this money has been good to been put to good use, and we have been. A, a commuting choice in the morning or in the evening, whenever, um, to be able to, to continue that funding. So th my goal is to be able to provide those analytics back to FDOT um, and, and show some, some real use. And uh, I, I really think that based on, and I've had this conversation uh, before uh, with President English, that it, it, we can take a very, very aggressive marketing stance with this now. And I think that we, I think we will see ridership explode on this. And that's a selling feature back to FDOT. Your money was a good investment. 
Uh, that's that's what needs to be proven. So that's my goal. So in essence, after in three years, you hope to train the community public. Yes. The idea of commuting, and then eventually they would just start paying for it. Hey. We don't know. We don't know. Yeah, we don't know. F dot may come back and say it was so successful that we'll continue it for another three years or two years, or but we will have to take into account. Um, the extension, and if there's bonding involved with the extension, and so there's a whole lot of different mechanisms that have to be taken into, into consideration. But I do know for the next three years, there won't be anybody paying, unless they're going to charter, we're going to keep those charter fees in place. Okay. At least that's my recommendation. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll be coming back with a full plan for that uh, to this board as well for consideration. Thank you. That's, that's amazing. Um, I, I was just shocked. I was really stunned. DOT um, typically doesn't provide operating funds for transit. They don't like to do that. They they only do so when they have no choice. So this is a really a big surprise. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, it was a gracious gesture by the governor and the and the secretary of transportation in Tallahassee. David Gwynn is is a pretty um, astute guy, and I'm just very impressed. I also wanted to thank Bob. I know that. Uh, you had uh, a lot to do with the encounter going away and, and the funding for that um, coming to the streetcar, and I want to thank you for that. I know that you were a champion of that for a long time. Perhaps the only one. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, but, sir. And, and just so you know, I've already spoken. Actually, when I read the, the article, I um, warned the CRA managers that my expectation is that we would be continued to uh, be providing funding on an annual basis. So Excellent. They, they were all aware of that fact. Good, good. Although it wasn't spelled out in the newspaper article, and right. several and people jumped to the conclusion that it would not, and I said, no. Uh, my my ex mm -hmm. uh, anticipation is that we, we would continue to mm -hmm. provide I, funding. That's great. I, 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 when you do the numbers in your head, it's pretty clear that, that the entire money and, and the money from the Department of Transportation um, can give you what you need provided uh, all the other funding sources stay in place. Correct. I would think that uh, that all the CRAs would at least look upon that with some favor. Mm -hmm. And um, so you're going to see YCDC, I think you said. We, we in the past have had a series of presentations to the CRA advisory boards. I assume that we're going to continue to do those this summer. Mm -hmm. And so Abby and I will be involved in that, Anyone, any of you who are interested, Dave. Um, so thanks, it's just an amazing, yeah, amazing, like yeah. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank Jeff for <coughs> yeah. initiating this and, and um, coming up with the idea of, of funneling it into the streetcar uh, system. That's very much appreciated and I, I think very creative. Um, to the last point though that we just talked about, um, to put this in perspective, um, no transit system pays for itself, so Correct. even if this program wound up doubling our ridership, that and we then went back to charging a fare, that would still be less than half of our overall budget. So we always have to be conscious of the fact that some form of subsidy needs to be in place, just like the whole park bus system, and just like the uh, successful system in New York City. It all they all require some form of subsidy. Yeah, I want to commend you too, Jeff, because you did this with your own initiative and, and um, uh, I understand completely why not I or anyone else really knew what you were doing because once that those little rabbits get out of the box, they're out and, and often that kills a deal. And with the board's <coughs> permission, I'm going to uh, uh, communicate with the hard board and thank you in that way too. Um, Please do. So any other questions or comments? Mm -hmm. If not, thank you very much. That's a great report. Thank you. Uh, Vector Media Sales, Lori Gage is not here. Is there any report? Typically, Vanessa, uh, just so you know, if, if she she's usually here to give a report on sales, if she's not in the past, our marketing staff would be have been prepared to tell us whether there was any marketing activity in terms of revenue or not. Sure. Okay, we have an action item resolution. Uh, well, this action item actually, Jeff, you want deferred to next month. Is this the? The 
Okay. Item three. okay, so you do want a request to extend yes. service for the 4th of July. Good afternoon, Chairman English and Board of Directors. I'm Vanessa Brooks, Hart Marketing and Communication Director. This action item requests extension of the streetcar hours on Wednesday, July 4th. Our normal hours, um, our normal hours of operation, we end at 10 p.m. We would like to propose to extend it to 12 midnight and have the ability to add three additional cars as needed. In the past, the streetcar has extended the hours to um, accommodate this event. Uh, emotions, please. Move to approve. We have a motion second. to approve and a second. Mm -hmm. Any further comment? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Thank you. Thank you. Just, just uh, informational, uh, the 4th of July fireworks will be in front of the convention center, not down by Channel Side Bay Plaza like they were in the past. Oh. But construction going on, and, and they were unwilling mm -hmm. to post it. So the uh, downtown CRA and the convention center, I mean the downtown CRA and the convention center are hosting it. Oh, that's great. It's a, it's a really nice place. Still good for the streetcar. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're going to post revenue as long as we can. That's right. That's right. Okay, and then B, we're going to defer. Do I need a motion or can we be come back next month? I don't think I need a motion to defer it. I, I, I believe we can just defer it. Just bring it back next month. Um, that leads us to compliance reports, uh, ridership, fare, financial, marketing. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, um, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank Great you. meeting.